Great. Well, congratulations and welcome back to Pandora. It's an amazing film. Um, I want to start because I wrote in my notes the most metal scene I've ever seen when you pick up your own skull <laughs> and crush it. <laughs> was When you read that, was that like an immediate, yes, I want to come back to Pandora to do this moment? Well, sure. That was the scene that Jim and I discussed <laughs> at length before, uh, uh, before it was ever written, in fact. Uh, that was... Uh, I was incorporated uh, into the script as as something that we we had kind of discussed, so I knew it was coming. Amazing! It's, it's very Hamlet-esque. It's an existential uh, moment that that one would have. How could you not have that scene? I, exactly, and it just I remember being this is the best scene I've ever seen. <laughs> it's so cool, um, and I really like your character's got a brand new dimension, many different dimensions to him now because he's playing. Some, something that he hated in the first film. That's right. How do you bring that kind of like balance to him that he's now the Na'vi that he's wanted to eradicate? Well, how do you do it? You do it with, uh, you know, daring and abandon, it seems to me. You just plunge in. But as you, it's, 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 it's good. I, I'm, glad, I'm delighted that you actually perceive it. But also I understand that Quaritch himself perceives the irony yeah. in this situation. And that's a wonderful thing. Quaritch is an immensely intelligent guy. He does tend to think in straight lines. But he, if, look, will you take a couple of Navi arrows to the chest? That can be a humbling experience. And if you don't learn, from that, then you don't deserve to come back. But he does learn from that, I think, and he's learned that uh, that he needs to go the way of water himself. He needs to, to, to begin to operate with a certain type, type of uh, fluidity, a certain type of agility uh, that maybe uh, he didn't before, before he, he basically operated at right angles and was really attempting to make this world fit into his vision of what this world needed to be. I think he's come around on that a bit. Absolutely. Now he's like, how can Pandora work for me and how can I work with Pandora to use it to my benefit? But I still got to win. I'm still going to win. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think some of the best scenes is when you start learning how the Na'vi work and process. How is it learning all that those kind of traits and adding those kind of skill sets? We had, there were many scenes also that, that, that don't make because you can only do so much. But there were scenes actually of learning the Na'vi way which were, they were great fun to shoot. They were, they were very, they, they were very much part of his story, his journey. But, I, but, you know, you can't, you gotta, you gotta stop at some point. They, they finally decided that, you know, two hours and 72 minutes would be a good length for this movie. And that, <laughs> that's where we ended up. Absolutely. And I, what struck me the most about this film is in the first film, I obviously hated your character as the main antagonist, but I found so much heart with him in this one because he's got Spider. And I think he sort of sees a reflection of himself in this kid. How was it developing this kind of genuine emotional kind of arc for him? Well, it's difficult. It's not something that he's looking for. It's not something he particularly wants. Uh, and yet there it is. You know, uh, uh, a spider is, uh, yeah, I think that he's referred to early in the film as something of a stray cat. And uh, I, I like that. And, and Korch, I think, you know, I think that Korch probably has a, a certain affinity for stray cats when you get right down to it. And of course, he's got a personal relationship with, with Spider, whether he chooses to acknowledge it or not. But the fact that he actually is present for Spider at times, even though he attempts to kind of repudiate it in a way to the kid, uh, uh, it don't ring quite, you know. He's trying to convince himself the kid means nothing to him, but it de just definitely ain't does. Gonna, that ain't gonna fly. <laughs> yeah. You know. And how is it working with Jack Champion on the, those scenes together? Well, I love working with Jack. He, you know, it, it's uh, Jack was raw clay coming in, as were the kids. Immense talent. But, you know, not a lot of experience. And so that kind of keeps you up to the mark. It means that, you know, you're, you, you understand that they're sucking in everything that they see you do. And so you want to give them, you want to give it your best. Be very, we could be very demanding on, on Jack. Jim could be very demanding on all the kids and everything. But, uh, but also understand you're working with, with kids. So you, got, you work with heart and you work with compassion and you work, understand that there's, there's also a mentoring aspect. Whether you want it or not, it's there. But he was, how fortunate is Jack to have people like Sam Worthington and, and uh, Zoe Saldana and, and, uh, and Sigourney Weaver and Jim Cameron kind of guiding him along the way. And then he got me. You know, I'm just <laughs> slapping him around. 
<laughs> it's like gone through a really prosperous process, and then he was like, "Nope, I'm gonna yeah. bring you, you back down." Dis- you discuss it with them. <laughs> Just do what I tell you to do. Were you kidding? No. Yeah. <laughs> we did great. I loved you. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. The film's incredible. Thank thank you you very much, my dear. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey You Guys.